Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to all here at First Methodist Church Maybank. A special welcome to any first time visitors we might have. We ask that you fill out a yellow card found in the pew racks and place it in the offertory plate. And we certainly hope you'll come back and worship with us again. Everyone else, please use the blue cards for all prayer requests and place those in the offering plate for inclusion in today's pastoral prayer. I hope you notice that we have a prayer blanket up here, and I do hope you'll take the time after service to stop and say a prayer. The prayer blanket is for Tanner Meyer, whose family are longtime friends of Yoli Beavers. Tanner was in a motorcycle accident and his leg had to be amputated. He is in the hospital for the fourth time because of complications, and now he has developed a staph infection in the remaining leg. So please pray for healing, comfort, and strength for Tanner and for his family. The altar flowers were given today in honor of Jack and Debbie Sebastian. Last Sunday's spaghetti lunch and dessert auction. Huge thanks to Alexis Slade, Charity Reynolds, and Leah Panel, who planned, purchased, and prepared everything. Then, expertly and efficiently set it all up with help from Rick Slade and Ryan Panel, and serving help from Shelby Damon. Special thanks to our mini Methodists, Alex, Anna, Austin, Harley, Peyton, Parker, Riley, and Sophie from the, from the WOW group, that's Worship on Wednesdays, Marcus, and from the Littles group, Miss Paisley, for all their help when they, they were helping in setting up, in serving, uh, they helped with the auction, and they helped with cleaning up. Thanks to all of you who donated desserts, and a huge thanks to Kenny Underiner, for his articulate and awesome auctioneering. <laughs> Thanks to all who participated in any way. We hoped to reach a goal of 4,000. On behalf of the two adults, seven children, and parents of those children, heartfelt thanks to everyone. They will be going on their first church camp. FMC family, you made it possible. You donated $5,100. Okay. The rest of the announcements. We are in need of volunteers for God's Helping Hands Food Pantry Ministry. And those interested, please see Medley Aarons. Tomorrow, March 4th, Mag's Luncheon, noon in the Fellowship Hall. Tuesday, March 5th, SPRC will meet at 6 p.m. in the conference room. Sunday, March 10th, Men's Breakfast, 8 a.m. in the Family Life Center. Monday, March 11th, Stretch Class will resume as it is not meeting tomorrow. A celebration of life service for Gary Crawford will be held at noon on March 16th at New Start Church of, of the Nazarene in Frisco. If you would like to attend and ride the church bus, please contact the church office. Sunday, March 17th, candy donations for our Easter egg hunt are due. Sunday, March 24th, is our Palm Sunday soup and chili luncheon. Food sign-up sheets are on the table in the narthex, so please sign up. And on the table are Holy Week schedule postcards. Please take cards to share and invite others to attend all of our upcoming events and services. That was a lot, so please review your bulletin for additional information. And speaking of Lent, last Wednesday, one of our M&Ms shared an experience that you might want to grab onto to help with your own journey through Lent. Our many Methodists are very bright children, and they all know that Lent is 40 days long. 
That's a long time, not counting Sundays. So they put serious thought into their This Lent I Promise To posters. We review those weekly, checking on each one's progress. They've promised things like, I'm going to be nice to my sister or my brother. I won't play with my sister's toys. Or one wrote, I think I'll try to be nice. <laughs> and you're welcome for the, the tip I'm about to share. One child promised to not eat any candy. And when I asked how that was going, the answer was, it's going good. I'm not eating any candy all week. I save it and eat it on Sundays. <laughs> Told you they were smart. <laughs> and now Cliff Watts has an announcement. Morning. I just wanted to invite everybody to our Sunday school class. We meet uh, right across the hall at 9 o'clock in the prayer room. We're not the big class in the fellowship hall. We're the smaller class in the prayer room. Um, this is a discussion-type class. You, everybody gets to give their opinion. Uh, you don't have to agree with other people or with the lesson or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, we want to hear what you have to say. And I'll tell you, I frequently learn more from the my classmates and what they say than I do from the lesson. And uh, I was asked to remind you that if you're not a big talker, you don't have to. You're perfectly welcome to come in and just sit there and listen. Um, we have been known to do uh, book studies, that kind of thing, but more commonly we will watch a 15 or 20 minute video and then discuss it and get everybody's opinions and uh, it's always very interesting. Uh, Next Sunday, we start a four-week Easter series. It's based on uh, some videos by Andy Stanley. If you're not familiar with him, he's a really good speaker and a really good minister, and we've uh, enjoyed his previous series that we did. So uh, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, I hope to see you across the hall in the prayer room next Sunday at 9 o'clock. Morning. Morning. I need... Uh, um, Paisley, come here. I need Sarah Lynn and I need Grady. Okay, so I typically wait and do this, but I thought, you know, it, it's time to bring these kids into the forefront. So, Miss Paisley was awarded Cub of the Month at school this week. And as m many know, we have an outstanding uh, Ag and FFA department at, at the Maybank schools. And this past weekend, um, our uh, week, excuse me. I wonder who the instructor's child is. Uh, Kaufman's show was this, this past week. And uh, so Grady uh, took reserve grand champion with his steer. No, you cannot go down. <laughs> Sarah took grand champion with her steer. Yeah. I need a loan. Can you loan me some money? <laughs> I love you too. Okay, y'all can go back to your chairs. Brother Ken, stand up, please, sir. Today is Brother Ken's birthday. He told me out there in the hallway, ha ha, made it another year.
One more. pre chorus stand up. I want you to look at this lady. She has put up with John for 51 years as of today. De Debbie has a jewel in her crown, guaranteed, because he's my cousin and I know how he is. <laughs> now, all of that said and done, I need to, I need to get serious with y'all for a minute. Um, so uh, I'm sure everybody has, has heard about uh, the devastating wildfires up in the Panhandle, and uh, we have some church family uh, church family members, families that live up in that area and uh, talk with them, and they all were in safe areas, but the, the, this uh, fires have uh, pr pretty much devastated the, the panhandle. And so uh, this is what uh, we would like to do. Uh, for this coming month, the month of March, if anyone would like to donate to relief efforts, uh, for the panhandle uh, uh, monetarily. Uh, you can uh, make a check uh, payable to Relief Fund um, and, and uh, turn that in along with your, your uh, tithes and offerings uh, weekly, or you can mail it into the church or however you would like to do it. Uh, but we, uh, uh, we're called to help our brothers and sisters and, and uh, with, with church family members uh, living in that area, uh, we need to uh, watch out and take care of them. So uh, for the, the coming month of March, uh, if you would like to uh, contribute to uh, a relief fund, uh, then uh, please do so. Just put down there in the memo uh, relief fund for the panhandle or however you want to do it that way. Uh, we, we know... Uh, where, where to put that money there. So uh, anyway, all right, thank you. And now let us worship together. The scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Hear these words. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we would give you glory throughout this season of Lent in our every thought, word, and action. Help us rid ourselves of all the noise and distractions that draw us away from you. May our journey this Lenten season feed our spirits to bring forth the fruit you desire as we seek you with all that we have and all that we are. And may our church family be a community spreading love and the harmony of your peace in all we say and do. We now place our offerings upon your altar. We thankfully give and offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Now let us together profess our faith through the sacred words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
You may be seated. Kiddos, come on down to the front. Who's your friend? Your cousin? What's your cousin's name? Avery and Madison? Maddie? I bet you're Maddie, aren't you? <laughs> what? You're Avery. You know, if I'd have said you're Avery, you'd have been Madison. <laughs> okay. How are y'all doing today? Everybody just need. Can y'all say it like that? <laughs> That's pretty doggone good there. You ready for your question? Well, you're going to get it anyway. You, you know why? Because I rule and you drool. How do groups of angels greet each other? How do groups of angels greet each other? What? Huh? Yep. Halo, halo, halo. <laughs> the winner. Why y'all staring at me? I'm not, I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> y'all get it? <laughs> what do angels have? Halos. Halo, halo, halo. What is a halo? It's this real shiny spot right there. <laughs> Who said it's a ball spot? <laughs> You're fired. Okay, um, so we're, we're, what, what? It's a halo. Did you not hear what I said? It's a halo. I'm an angel. Okay, Tate, you're, you're going a little... Too education wise, there for me. Uh, so we are in Lent, and uh, I understand it's my understanding that y'all have been studying Lent and everything. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you today about when uh, Jesus went to the temple. So, uh, how many of you are responsible for cleaning your bedroom? Who cleans your bedroom? Sometimes you never clean your bedroom. <laughs> what about, wh why didn't you raise your hand? You, oh, you leave it to your mom to do. <laughs> you know, Peyton, at some period in your life, you're going to learn to quit digging the hole deeper and deeper <laughs> and deeper. Uh, who else didn't raise your hand? Everybody else clean? You don't, you don't clean your bedroom? Why not? Because you don't like to? Who, who, cleans, who cleans your room? Your mom? Oh, so you got a whole list of people that clean for you. Your mom and who? People who mess it up. You never mess up your room, do you? No. Grady, you clean your bedroom? What? You like your room to be clean, it's always clean. What about you? You don't clean most of the time? What do you do? 
You leave it messy. How many of y'all just leave your rooms messy? <laughs> well, when you're told to clean your room, what do you, what do, you do with the stuff that you pick up? Take it to your mom's room. I heard, what did you say? Shove it in the corner. You put it in your closet. You burn, No, you don't. Um, somebody said you shove it under the bed. Who said that? So, um, our scripture today talks about Jesus going to the temple and clean, cleansing and cleaning the temple. And what was going on was there's a whole bunch of clutter and junk going on out in the, one of the outer courts of the temple. And so uh, Jesus wanted it all out of there. And, and Jesus got angry. He got upset. And uh, he started driving the money changers and, and the people selling uh, the sacrificial animals he kicked them out, and he drove, drove them out with a whip. And uh, so what, what, I, what I want us to think about since we're in Lent is that uh, just like our bedrooms sometimes in our, our personal lives, uh, it, it kind of gets all cluttered up and everything, and we tend to shove it under the bed or put it in the closet or stack it in the corner, and before you know it, there's not any room in our hearts for Jesus. And so... What we need to do is we need to, to make sure that we do like Grady said and, and keep, keep that area clean and clear so that Jesus has plenty of room to, to stay. So this week I want you to just kind of take a step back and look and see how much cleaning you need to do within your heart. In other words, getting rid of all this clutter and junk like uh, uh, video games that, that, that we allow to take president or watching TV or, or something that, that isn't helpful uh, to our growth. Okay? All right? Let's pray. Dear Lord, Dear Lord thank, you for today. thank you for today. Help me, Help me to, keep my heart clean to keep my heart clean so that you have a place, so you have a place. to live. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. You can go back to your seats.
may be seated. God has blessed you this week. Say amen. amen. If he hadn't, say oh me. I love silence. <laughs> Tell me where you saw Jesus this week. Wonderful church. My grandson. Grandson. In the pastor's favorite hymns. <laughs> pastor's favorite hymn. Hymns. Thursday night Bible study. Relaying. Martin's Mill Basketball. <laughs> the Spaghetti Dinner. Under my pillow. Under your pillow. <laughs> Y'all will hear about that here in a minute because he has given me permission to use that in my sermon as an example. Um. Where do we need to see God this coming week? Everywhere. Everywhere. We've got several folks that are in need of prayer. Linda Knapps, uh, Donna Harden, Kristen Carnell, Cornell, and Gina Kearney, uh, the folks in the Texas Panhandle and the first responders, uh, Nancy Crawford and, and her family, Gwen. Still needs prayers, but she's back with us after her fall. Uh, Sheldon Clements, uh, Ed Nolan family, Ken Zerbeck, Sue Simpson and her family, and Tanner Meyer. There's, I know, many, many more that we need to lift up in prayer, so will you join me now? Almighty and gracious Father, we're so thankful to you for the blessings that we receive. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to worship you in a free country and in your house. Father, we're thankful to you for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent to be our sacrifice. Father, we're thankful to you for the opportunity that we have to share your word with others. And Father, we're thankful to you for being here with us in our lives daily, hearing and talking to us, showing us the way. Father, we come before you right now with a, a whole list of those who are in need of your intervention, whether it be in illness, in sorrow, in decisions made, made in our lives in general. So, Father, we lay all of this before you, knowing full well that you are answering those prayers even as we speak. And, Father, we lift up those who are in search of a relationship with you that they might find you and say yes. Holy Father, we also ask as your church as your disciples that you continue to lead and guide us in the path that you have called us to go that we might be that beacon of light in a fog of confusion so that others might find you and find that safe place we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen.
Please rise as we read from the Word of God. We'll be reading from John chapter 2. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciple remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we ask that you open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears that as you speak to us today, we will receive those words and put them into action in our lives. And Lord, pray that the words that come out of my mouth are a blessing to you. Pray it in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Ever lost anything? <laughs> we had an incident this morning here at the church. Everything's going along great. Everybody's happy. Phone rings. It's Nick. (laughs) And I have to be honest, in my mind, I'm thinking, boy, do not be calling me to tell me you ain't going to be here. (laughs) I said, hello. Nick kind of stutters around a little bit. And I'm thinking, boy, you really better not be telling me you ain't showing up. He said, we have a problem that my beautiful, wonderful, intelligent, great wife has never experienced before. She has lost my car keys. And we can't find them anywhere. I said, okay, I'll I'll be on my way. I'll come pick you up. I get almost out there. Phone rings. It's Nick. We found him. Well, where were they? Under my pillow in the bedroom. I don't have a clue how they got there. (laughs) I do. (laughs) Avery. (laughs) Which brought me to think about an incident that happened in our household many years ago when we lost something, too. Ironically, it was car keys. We searched everywhere, and I mean searched everywhere, through everything, and we found them in a Cheez-Its box (laughs) that our eldest had decided to play hide and seek. Uh I tell you these things to lead off this message with In my mind, as I read this scripture time and time again, I wonder what was the set-off point for Jesus when he entered into that temple. I wondered what it was that caused him to show his human side more than normal. I sometimes get tickled at people about, you know, they'll be going through things and they've got these drastic things going on in their lives and and, and their response is always, no one understands what I'm going through. And if you read the Bible, you see that the one person that does know what you're going through is Jesus. 
even when you completely lose your cool and show what kind of temper you really have. But I thought about what kind of scenario would, would cause him to, to just explode like that. And so in my mind, and, and as I tell Angie all the time, the last place you want to be is in my mind. I start going through all these different scenarios. How many of you have ever been to Canton on first Monday? How many of you like going to Canton on first Monday? How many of you like being in Canton on first Monday? One person. I went to to first Monday a long time ago when I was a kid, and I barely remember it. And then when we get moved, got moved down here, uh, went and and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, holy cow! This has got to be the most chaotic, crazy mess I've ever witnessed in my life. People everywhere. You got all these little cubby holes. People are selling things. And, I mean, you'll have somebody selling caps here, and right next to them you got somebody selling fruitcakes. And then right next to them they're selling this, and next to that it's that. And, and over here they're, they're selling dogs and cats and any other animal they can get up there. And then you get, y'all see that? I almost fell. <laughs> it's just chaotic. And if you're looking for anything in particular, now I don't know about most of y'all, but it takes me a month to figure out where to go to find the exact thing I was looking for. And so in my mind, I'm comparing the fact that Jesus walked into the outer temple court, which is the, the court of the Gentiles. Let me give you just a little bit of history on that. The court of Gentiles was the only place that non-Jews were allowed to go in the temple. That was the only place. They couldn't go any further than that. And that's where all the money changers and all the sellers and all of the First Monday Canton stuff was going on. Jesus walks into that court of the Gentiles and he sees all this clutter and he loses it. And he references the fact that how dare you turn my father's house into a marketplace. That's what that outer court looked like was most likely first Monday trades day in Canton. How could anyone find what they were searching for as a Gentile looking for a religious experience with God if they walked in there and all of this stuff is going on? Now, it's not so bad that they were doing the things that they were doing because some of it had to be done. But there was some extortion going on. There was some robbery going on. But that should have been done outside those temple walls. And that's what Jesus was trying to get across. Don't do this in the one place that someone needs to find God. Unfortunately, churches have become the same way. I have gone into churches where I couldn't find the sanctuary because there was so much going on outside the sanctuary in 
Let's call it the outer court. I went to one not too long ago where as soon as you walk in the door, there's this big, long counter. And the doors to the sanctuary are behind that counter. And at the counter, there were three people there wanting to know if they could direct you to a particular area, wanting to know what you wanted in your Starbucks coffee. And to show you where the donuts were. In some way, the church has become a marketplace inside the sanctuary. And it's hard for people to find God. In our own personal lives. Our lives have become a marketplace. We have so much stuff cluttered around that when we need to find God in our own hearts, it's hard to find Him there. Because we've covered Him up. Or we've shoved Him in a box. Or we've pushed him in a corner. How are we to have a right relationship with God when we can't even find him in our own hearts? I believe that today, especially in this time, it's time to cleanse the temple. Just as Jesus cleansed the temple over 2,000 years ago by driving out all the unnecessary things within that temple court, we too in our own churches need to focus on what's important. I may get in trouble for saying this, but oh well, So be it. The main focus of the church is to bring souls to Christ. It's not this little ditty and that little thing over there. Our main focus is to help people find Christ in their life. Which ties into the next statement. How can we help someone find Christ if we can't even find him in our own life? We need to do some cleansing in our own souls. We need to get rid of the clutter. So that in turn, we can help others get rid of their clutter. I saw a deal on TV not too long ago or heard somebody make a comment. They said, uh, the worst lawn you will find around is a landscaper's. Because he's so busy taking care of everybody else's, he doesn't have time to take care of his. We need to cleanse us first so that we can help others cleanse their lives. And we can help them find the key (laughs) of their life. Wherever it might be hidden. So brothers and sisters, as we go through this season of Lent, as I told the youngsters earlier, let's take a step back this week and look at the clutter in our own lives. 
so that we can cleanse our hearts, our temple, first. Let's pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for your words to us today. Father, as we have examined Jesus going into your temple and cleansing it, help open our eyes to see the cleansing that needs to be done in our own lives within the capital C church. That we might be able to reconnect and have that right relationship. So that when others are in need of help finding you, we can help them search. And we can help them cleanse. Father, as we go today, help us to begin that examination. As a matter of fact, as we come to your altar today, to receive communion. Let that process begin now. We pray it in your name. Amen. Today, we come together to celebrate communion. The Lord's Supper. We come together to share with each other at Christ's table. We come together today to corporately search ourselves that we might have a closer walk with Christ. So we come to Christ's table, Christ's table, not First Methodist Church's table, not the global Methodist church table, we come to Christ's table. And Christ invites to his table all who truly love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins, all who dwell in charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to God Almighty. Let's pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be a community church. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his great mercy, our Heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of sins to all who repent and with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ always be with you. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us greet one another in the signs of peace. Turn to somebody next to you and tell them, Jesus loves you and so do I. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our joy to give thanks to you in all places and all, at all times. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and your, our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you with all the company of heaven 
forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, Holy. All praise and glory is yours, all, O God, our Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Your Spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, comfort those who mourn, proclaim freedom to the captive, and liberty to the oppressed. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampled hell, and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, is, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O Father, receiving these gifts of bread and wine with thanksgiving for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and partake in his most blessed body and blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ and one as your church, that Christ may, might dwell in us and we in him. We ask this through your son who with, your, with you and the Holy Spirit in your holy church be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Table has been set, the invitation has been given. All that remains is that you come to Christ. And I'll remind you as you come today and you partake of this holy sacrament, that you begin the search within yourselves to cleanse the temple. Well, my stewards come forward now.
This is our hymn of invitation. I love to tell the story. That's what we should be all excited about on a daily basis. I love to tell the story. Hymn of invitation, anyone would like to become a part of this church family by trans transferring your letter, or if you would like to profess your faith in Christ today and receive him in your heart, you're invited to come as we stand and sing. poke fun at me with my keys a little bit, so I'm going to flip the script. Uh, the choir and I have kind of pulled a fast one on him today, and uh, I think it's went right over his halo. Uh, <laughs> Miss Rhonda in the choir came to me a couple months ago and said, I have a wonderful idea. So we, we kind of took it, uh, ran with it, and conspired a little bit with Angie. Um, Church in the Wildwood, Victory in Jesus, I Love to Tell the Story, and The Benediction, There's Power in the Blood, are the hymns Angie gave us as your favorite hymns. Good job, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Underreiner even said the pastor's favorite hymns, and it... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I have to say, when he said that, I'm wondering, okay, was it Victory in Jesus or Church in the Wildwood? Because those are my... Two favorite until we just did the, this one, and I love them all. Thank you all very much for, <laughs> for that. Uh, and once again, uh, not a better church family than this one right here. I uh, love you all to death. Thank you for the love that you pour out on Angie and I. Receive this benediction as you go from this place. Go with joy in your heart. Leave with a smile on your face. And leave with a song on your lips so singing these songs will let you know how wonderful it is to tell somebody about Jesus. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I promise you, is going to place somebody in your path this week. Don't mess it up. Amen. Amen.